At age 72, Esther lost 130 pounds. Please click like to help Be Green with Amy. Welcome, author of From Donuts to Potatoes, Esther Loveridge. Greetings and welcome back, Esther. Oh, thank you, Amy. It's so wonderful to see your wonderful smile. And we both had birthdays this month. And we just did. <laughs> feeling be green with Amy. Yeah. <laughs> and greetings to my Green Warriors. Thank you all for joining us. You know, Green Warriors, well, we know, we know that a whole food plant-based diet has the power to nourish your body. But have you ever considered going raw? Well, today, Esther is going to talk to us about the world of raw, whole food, plant-based living, and we're going to learn about the benefits and potential challenges that it brings. Right, Esther? That's right. That's right. It's always fun to grow and to learn and to refine and to uh, allow our bodies to be healthier and healthier as we take our journey. I love it. Yeah, so the last time when I spoke with Esther and I had invited her to come back on the show, I said, okay, so what do you want to talk about next? And she said, how about raw? I said, are you raw? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. So I thought that was very interesting. And we have had some guests in the past that have been whole food plant-based and raw, and they found much success with it. And so we're going to find out about uh, what you've been doing with it. And maybe we can just kind of first talk about raw because some, for some people it is a mystery. For some people, whole food plant-based is a mystery, but then yeah. raw would be even more, more interesting. So you want to talk about that? Yeah, I, I think it's kind of interesting. I'll, I'll just tell you how it happened. You know, life leads us in different ways. We never know where we're going to end up sometimes, but what happened for me was I went to the farmer's market one week and we could get like three, two big bags. I mean, really big bags of uh, fruit that was, you know, kind of getting older, but it's still salvageable. Uh, and so I, I brought it home and I started cutting it up. And as some of you know, I take a picture of everything I eat. So as I was cutting off the ripe part of this fruit, um, I thought, well, I just will eat it. And so I started eating it. And then I thought, now how am I going to take a picture of how much peaches or nectarines I was eating? And then I thought, well, I'm just going to make this an all fruit day. So that was day one. And so I ate peaches and nectarines that day and drank my water, you know, and I really felt a surge of energy. Wow. You know what, Esther, I'm sorry, but we're having a little static on your end. So like the four, maybe you can pop out and pop in. It's kind of like okay. a, an okay. old TV okay. show, Bewitched, or the genie show. Okay. <laughs> while, while Esther is going to uh, work on her sound, I wanted to ask you, Green Warriors, how many of you have gone wrong? Because some of you are watching that maybe you have done that, and I'm interested to know. So tell us in the comments how many of you have gone raw, and maybe you want to uh, put a little comment about what your experience has been, if you stayed with it, or, or if it was just something that you kind of experimented with. So I would like to do that. And then also, if you have a question for Esther, type it in the comments, in the comments below, and I'm going to ask it later in the broadcast. So we will hold the, the questions for toward the end. So I will be looking for them. So anytime that you have a question, just kind of uh, pop it in there. That I would like to know who, who out there has gone. Oh, and here, yeah, the vegan knowledge. JJ said, I have. Yes, I know. <laughs> we talked about that. And Fix It Rick said, no, but I'm interested. Yes, I'm interested too. And I've actually... See if we, I've actually tried to do a little bit of raw, but I think that maybe, okay, Mona said, I did try it for a week, but I love my collard steamed. Yes. Yes. So I was asking, hi, yes, I was asking everybody if they had tried raw or if they were raw. And Mona was just saying that she tried it for a week, but she loves her collard steamed. And uh, oh. Tennessee. The girl said, I eat a combination of both cooked and raw whole food plant based SOS free. So, yep. And then, of course, vegan knowledge, who I've, JJ, who I've had on the show, says I have. And, and 
she can uh, you can watch her story and I can put a link to that. So go ahead. So you you decided I'm just gonna do raw for the day, and you felt well, this. Well, it, it was, wasn't even I wasn't even really thinking raw. I was just thinking fruit. Okay. Okay. And so I ate peaches and nectarines that day, and I I kind of had a surge of energy, and I went out in the yard. And I was doing oh I know what I was doing is cleaning out the freezer. That was a big job. It was stand up you know freezer, and the ice had gotten to be about this thick on it it was a big job but i just kept at it and kept at it and just really seemed to have a, a clarity of mind and anyway so then day two came the next day and i thought well you know i'm just going to try fruit again so i did fruit the second day and then the third day came and i thought well i feel wonderful i'm just going to eat fruit again and so i had four days of fruit only and um then some people in my group started saying, oh, Esther, what would Dr. McDougal say? And I said, oh, he'd probably say, where's the starch? <laughs> you know, so then I thought, okay, uh, I will try eating some raw potatoes. That way I was still doing the raw thing and also getting some starch in. And then I had some corn on the cob that was raw and that was delicious. And so there were, it was just kind of an experiment and I didn't know how long I was going to do it. I wasn't following any doctor or any podcast or any guru out there on the benefits of raw, but I just kind of thought this is one way of eating unprocessed and there's no chemicals and I'm just eating it. And I didn't even worry about organic or inorganic. So people can just experiment with their lives and with their intake of food. And that was mine. At the end of four weeks, I decided that I wanted to have some beans and rice, things that I don't know how to eat raw and um, kind of develop back into it. I'm, I'm still appreciating raw things. Although last night I ate three ears of corn and I did put them in hot water for 10 minutes. It wasn't like cooking, but it was heating it up. And so it's just, you know, no matter how old we get, it's still time to play. And we get to play with our food. You know, we were always taught when we were kids, don't play with your food, you know, but that's what we're all doing in our kitchen these days. We're playing with ideas. We're playing with a philosophy. We're playing with um, our friends and uh, life is one big playpen. So this is kind of how I got started and and I did notice um, several benefits. And I think as we get into your the questions and the true and false, we can kind of expand on it too. But it was fun. It may not be for you. And just because I did it, you know, especially for people who are in my group on Esther's Nutritional Journey, just because I do something doesn't mean I intend anybody else to do it. It's just my journey. And if what I do appeals to you, fine. If it doesn't, fine. Because we're all on our own pathway. So I don't do something to try to set up um, a guideline for anyone else, but I just report what I do and how it affects me. Yes, I, I love that. And uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, and we're gonna talk to you later, everybody about uh, Esther's Facebook group, but she has this accountability thing for herself where she posts every day everything that she eats and her followers are watching. <laughs> and when she and because she basically had followed Dr. McDougal's weight lifestyle, her followers, a lot of them are McDougalers, and when they didn't see that starch, they they knew right away. So your accountability group, they're not going to let anything through if you if no, you're not posting no. something that that they don't think is a uh, is on plan. They're going to let you know, which is great. Right, you know, that really is. Okay, yeah. well, I think what we're going to do because you talked about the 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 questions and the true or false, so we're going to play our game. It's time for True or False on Be Green with Amy Live. Answer true or false to Amy's questions in the comments below, and Amy will ask our guest for the expert answer. Okay, Esther, here's the first question. Green Warriors, what do you think? True or false, eating raw salads is a benefit in losing weight. So type in your guess, true or false. And while you're doing that, Esther, tell us what has your experience been? Well, have you ever tried to eat a potato raw? You know, if you had um, 
cooked potatoes, it would be a little bit easier. If you had mashed potatoes, it would be even easier. And so to the extent that we process food, it takes longer to chew and to eat. And there's no way you can eat as much as you can if food is processed or cooked. I mean, that's just a given. And I've never had any scientific you know, study saying this, but I know, especially when I advanced to trying to eat a sweet potato raw, you know how hard they are. I think it took me maybe like a half an hour or longer to eat one sweet potato raw. And uh, it was an interesting experiment, but definitely um, you can't gulp the food down when it's raw. Right, yeah. And so even if it's raw and you put it in the Vitamix, right, and blend it up into a smoothie, now that's not, that probably wouldn't be considered raw because it's processed. I don't know how they get, what well, they consider that. I think it might be still raw, but in terms of, um, in terms of losing weight, which is what the question was, uh, I just don't think you can eat the quantities of raw food as you can cooked food. So uh, when food is cooked, it's going to be easier to eat more. Or even if you process it and put it in the blender, especially if it's a lot of fruit and things like that, yes, you're going to be probably eating more because the blender is doing the chewing for you. Yeah, that's true. So I think it looks like you're getting some more static again. I was hoping it would go away, but it seems we're going to have to have you pop in and pop out like a genie again. All and, right. Okay. And I'm, I'm sorry to yeah, see. Yeah, this is, some, this is a technology sometimes, and that's what happens. So Green Warriors, you talk, we, for those of you that are just joining us, I asked for you to put in the comments if you have adopted a raw diet or at least tried it and let us know in the comments what that experience was and then i wanted to know if is there anything that you would like to learn more about regarding the benefits of uh raw plant-based eating so if you can put that in the comments and tell us about that if you have those questions and we can always put that and tell esther about that when she comes back because she's just sometimes when she resets and signs in and comes back then uh, her internet is better and she's not as uh, crackly. So I'm going to look in the comments to see if anybody is uh, sharing their experiences with this uh, raw. Let's see. Okay, well. Okay, Boomer and Beyond Wellness. That's Angela Fischetti. She's been a uh, guest on the show many times doing her exercises. And she said, most raw chefs spiralize sweet potatoes. Okay, Esther. All right. So Angela Fischetti, who is Boomer and Beyond Wellness, she said that most raw chefs spiralize sweet potatoes. You talked about eating a sweet potato. Do you, did you ever try? Do, I don't know if you have a spiralizer. Did you ever try to spiralize? No, I didn't get that far to where I got to that point. But I know one time we were on a trip. I think we were in Mexico, and I bought a sweet potato, and I ate it raw on the plane. And I'll tell you, the story behind that was as long as you were, this was during COVID, so as long as you were eating on the plane, you didn't have to wear the mask. <laughs> and so I made eating that potato at least an hour long because then I could just be without the mask. It was, it was kind of my little game I played. But yeah, it takes a long time to eat raw potatoes. They're so solid, you know. No, I didn't try spiralizing, but I didn't. I wasn't really trying to do the, the raw thing according to anybody's instructions. I just was experimenting with it. So that was my experience. But yeah, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. You know, of course, we eat broccoli raw. I mean, when they're on a veggie tray, we eat cauliflower raw. I eat cucumbers raw. eat carrots and celery raw. And what else do people eat raw? Um, but the potatoes is, was a little bit different. You know, and then, of course, corn on the cob was raw, too. But it's, it's just kind of fun to um, see how our bodies react. You know, and what's really, I think, what I want to stress that's important is following your own body. You know, we there are lots of influencers out there that have ideas, and some of them we like, and some of them the ideas we don't care for. But what I really want to stress is how important it is for each of us to be in touch with ourselves 
and know that we intuitively, we know what's best for us. So we don't really have to worry about following someone else. We just need to pay attention and be mindful and be aware. And if we like the results, continue. And if we don't, we can adjust our sales, so to speak. So that's, in essence, what I was doing with my experiment was just trying it on for myself. Not that I was really trying to purify my body anymore or, you know, trying to be perfect or anything like that. It was just, it was just wonderful to learn how nature created these foods for us to eat before we had fire. Yes, so, that's very true. Yeah. So they had to be okay for many people for a long time. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. We have another true or false questions. Uh, true or false, Green Warriors, all foods need to be cooked in order to be safe. So type in your answer, and then Esther, what do you want to talk about with that? Are you ready for me to respond? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, if, if we think about it, of course, um, some people have bought into the idea that food had to be cooked in order to destroy any germs and, you know, pesticides or, you know. But actually, what I have heard is that oftentimes the very heat on our food actually destroys some of the enzymes that are important for us. So no, food does not have to be cooked. I mean, we don't cook oranges before we eat them. We don't cook bananas before we eat them. And uh, I think actually, this is my own thinking now, that we've become so antiseptic that we have really affected our body's uh, ability to build its own immune system. So when I was recently in Mexico, Chef AJ, we went out to the farm and the gentleman there who does all the farming just pulled some vegetables out of the ground. And, you know, I just brushed it off and ate it because when we're strong internally, we have a good immune system that, you know, what's the difference between taking a little bit of dirt in or taking in a vaccine? You know, our body's going to build immunity for those things. So, you know, I don't think we need to go out and eat dirt, but, you know, I think it's uh, not good to be so worried about germs and all that either. So, yeah, you can eat it raw. If, it's, if, it's, if nature grew it that way, it didn't come with a recipe. <laughs> yes, yes, very good. That's very interesting, in the way that you put it. That's a, you have so many uh, little things that could be great quotes, I think. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> or t-shirts or whatever. <laughs> Maybe that's the joy of turning 80. I'm so happy. I just turned 80 and I just have never felt better in my life. I've never been happier. I've never had a cleaner brain. I've never felt more loving towards people. And I'm learning more and more that um, my journey is my journey and it's what helped me. And if it helps someone else, that's fine. But we're all on our own journey. So just pay attention to yourself, you know, don't worry about trying to model somebody else, you know, just know your own truth and live by it and, and be happy. Yes, that's a very good lesson. And I, I wanted to say something uh, touching on the topic that we were just talking about where, um, that there's a Dr. Ron Weiss, he has a, actually a farm and a medical practice in New Jersey. And one of the things that he actually does is when he has patients that are very sick and he wants to help, help heal them with their microbiome, he will give them his organic vegetables and fruits that he grows on his farm and he won't wash them off. And he tells, mm -hmm. take this home, don't wash it. So wow. it'll have some, some soil on it and, and he wants them to eat it just like that with, I mean, not with dirt, but you know, like a little dusting of, of soil on it because of the microbes that are in the soil too. Oh, really feels that it's, you know, yeah. So that would be interesting. I hope one day to be able to, to visit there because it seems oh, like- Oh, wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. It'd be fun to meet you there. Yeah. I saw, I saw a podcast with him and it sounds like an all day affair, right? 
yeah, I think he has, and he has a lot of classes there. So he really, he's a very, very interesting uh, person. He has a lot of knowledge and, and we can all definitely learn from him. Zena said, I'm so curious now to try a raw potato. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had uh, a potluck because we have potluck dinners with our uh, plant-based friends here. And at one time somebody brought a salad and it had julienne uh, sweet potatoes raw in it wow. and ginger. Ooh, and yeah, it was good. a really nice combination. And I think she put some lemon juice in it. And that kind of, the lemon juice, the acid in the lemon juice kind of breaks down the potato in a way of kind of raw cooking it in a way. And uh, I couldn't believe that that the potato was raw when I ate it. And I said, I didn't know you could even eat a raw potato. And that was a while ago. So that, it, it was delicious. And I love ginger. So for me, it was a really nice combination of, of flavors. Well, I think that's the exciting thing about our communities. We have so much to learn from each other. It's like a whole bunch of, I, didn't, I never had a sister, but I could imagine a lot of sisters in the kitchen and each one have an idea and influencing one another. And I, we're so fortunate that with YouTube and with the internet and with Facebook that we can stay connected with one another. It's just, uh, it doesn't have to be in person. It's wonderful when you can meet with people in person because we can share our hugs but um, it, it's, I, I'm just so thankful for Facebook and for you and for what you're doing and all the different influencers that are out there. We're all contributing to the whole. And it's just, uh, it's a, it's just a happy place to be. So I well, yes. I, I, and I love having you on the show. And that's why I keep inviting you back. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, we're still getting some static now. You were great. And then it, it's going back again. So I'm okay. sorry, Esther, but I... Okay. I want everybody to hear your words. So okay. if you could sign out, and then I'm going to ask the Green Warriors to answer this question. So what are your favorite raw plant-based recipes or dishes? Share, share your to-go meals and inspire the other Green Warriors to try them. I had just shared with you that I had tried this wonderful dish and so simple of spiralized uh, raw sweet potatoes and julienne well it was spiralized or julienne and then also the uh ginger and then just lemon juice and mixed together and it was it was so delicious so i wonder if any of you have had anything raw or some kind of a raw dish if you would want to share that with us because i i think that would be a lot of fun to see what you guys are doing if you are doing anything in the raw so, and Esther's going to be coming back on again. So An Angela wanted to know if there was anything blocking or near a microphone. And Esther broadcasts from her iPad. So I, I just think it may be her Wi-Fi that interferes sometimes. But we will, oh, <laughs> Boomer Beyond Wellness said, I can't elope. <laughs> That's a great recipe. <laughs> and, and you know, they, um, they had, hi, Esther. <laughs> Boomer and Brian Wellness said, I was asking people to share their recipes for raw food. And she said, the cantaloupe. <laughs> and I was about to say, I love how you can just make it into a, its own bowl too, right? You just cut it in half, scoop out the seeds, and you can just eat it right out of there. And you don't have any dishes to wash. <laughs> oh, but Amy, guess what I was doing? Okay. I was scooping out the seeds and eating those too. Oh, wow. And I looked it up and they're safe. And and watermelon seeds are safe and pomegranate seeds are safe. So I don't know what I got from that, but we found this wonderful, it's a type of cantaloupe at the farmer's market. It's called ambrosia. And it was like heaven on earth. It was so wonderful. And so we cut it in half and I said to Ben, save me your seeds too, you know because there's nutrients in all of the all of the food yeah so if you're unsure about it don't eat it but if you want to try it you know it's 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 possible or maybe do it in moderation you don't want to overload your system yeah i i actually i was trying to remember his name somebody that i had watched on the internet i think and he said that he he other he doesn't eat the apple seeds but he'll eat the whole core yeah not the stem but he'll eat the all the core yes i do too 
Yeah. In fact, there's a funny story my brother said to me. He said, Esther, he said, you've gone too far. And I said, what do you mean? He said, someone told me you were eating cherry stems. I said, no, 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 I wasn't eating cherry stems. It was strawberry stems. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because they're, they're green too. Yes, they are. Those are leaves. And we often yeah. discard some of the best parts. Of course, when I eat an apple, my, my, my puppy Zeus, he will not let me eat any part of that core because he expects to eat that. <laughs> oh, how nice. See, our animals, <laughs> our animals can teach us so much. Well, the thing I realized one time when Ben and I were traveling, I don't know if it was Indonesia, or I don't remember what country it was, but we went to this place and they had all of these gorillas and orangutans and they were eating raw sweet potato. See that? Right, and there's so much like us. And, and we were talking about the, uh, the nutrients that are in, in different parts of the plants and even uh, Boomer and Beyond Wellness said, I eat, eat the skin of the kiwi. There are lots of nutrients, and that's what I do. I do definitely eat the skin off of the kiwi, you know. And for some people, it might be a little bit tough, but if you slice it up small enough that you don't even notice the skin. No. You it. So you could start that way, because for some people, the texture may not be agreeable to them. <laughs> yes, it's not what we're used to eating, yeah. and it's something we normally would take off, but I even tried eating the skin of an avocado. And it's interesting. I won't say it's delicious, uh -huh. you know, but it does have nutrients. You know, we talk about whole food, right? Yeah, and, that would be a whole food, absolutely. Yeah. And, so, yeah, but if, and if you think about it, if you were really hungry and you didn't have access to a supermarket and you were just kind of out, out in the wild, you would probably wind up eating a lot more, you know, of the skins and, and things, parts of those fruits, because you wouldn't want to waste any of it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think we'd ever crawl out on the grass and eat that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that some people that aren't plant-based and are our friends think we do. <laughs> okay, <all right. laughs> <laughs> well, well, my dad used to call it rabbit food. <laughs> but I did want to share for those of you that aren't familiar with Esther, because you had um, some weight loss that you experienced and you just want to give a brief uh, summary of that. So if anybody is new that hasn't seen you, they can know what you, you did. Oh, sure. Uh, again, we were traveling and what brought me to my knees was my pain. As you can see, this, these pictures uh, were actually taken on that trip. So that's exactly how I looked uh, when I got the message that I needed to do something. Uh, we came, I, I could hardly get to the gate at the airport to come home. And I was concerned because this was May of 2016, seven years ago. And we were planning a trip to China in the fall. And I thought it didn't matter that I had diverticulitis. It didn't matter that I'd have GERD. It didn't matter that I had thyroid issues. It didn't matter that I had sleep apnea, sleeping pills, back pain. You know, I had a laundry list of ailments. And none of that really mattered to me because I could still travel. But when it got to the point where my knees were going to threaten my ability to travel, I knew I needed help. So I came home, went to the doctor, and he said, I can give you knee injections, or he said, you could keep taking your pain medication, or I could refer you to orthopedics for a knee replacement, but you'd have to lose 70 pounds first. I didn't have time to lose 70 pounds, and I didn't like what he was suggesting. And I just didn't know what to do. But you know, I firmly believe that when the teacher is, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So I came home and as Providence would have it, my girlfriend gave me the McDougall program for Maximum Weight Loss book. I have been on every diet, any of you who have struggled with weight, you know, we've tried them all, right? And I could lose weight. I had good willpower. I could lose weight, but keep sustaining that weight loss was never 
anything I had experienced. And I had never heard of a diet before that didn't include animal protein. So this was way off the charts for me, but I was desperate. I dove into that book and it saved my life. Now, whether or not that's going to be your pathway, I don't know, but it was my pathway. And that pathway included eliminating all animals, all dairy, eggs, and oil, and sugar. Well, not really sugar. He wasn't so much against 100% sugar, but definitely animal and dairy and oil. That was the big thing. And focusing on starch, that we need the starch for our energy and for our brains and for the calorie intake. So it was big on potatoes. So anyway, I dove into that book, and in a few months, we went to China, and I did, I, I started doing better. I had already started losing some inches. I think altogether, I lost like nine inches off of each knee, and totally, I lost 130 pounds. I got off all my medications, and the, the most unusual thing uh, was my eyesight. I had a macular pucker in my eye. I had two cataracts. And the doctor was uh, following me for that uh, eye condition. And three months after I started eating this way, he said, I think we're finally to the point where we can do surgery. And where I got the idea that this eating plan could even help my eyes, I don't know to this day where I got that idea. But I said, well, I changed my eating three months ago. And I just have this feeling it's going to help my eyes. So do I have to do surgery now? And he said, no, come back in six months. I followed that protocol for several six-month periods of time. And finally, in December of 2018, I said, should I still be wearing my reading glasses to protect my eyes? And he said, with your eyesight, you do not need to wear glasses. I mean, talk about miracles of miracles. I have never heard at that time of, of this way of eating affecting anyone else's eyesight. Since then, I have heard where others have also experienced um, changes in their eyes and improvement. So I went back to our Department of Motor Vehicles when it was time to renew my license. And I had had corrective lens on my license for 30 years, even got a ticket one time for not wearing my glasses. And DMV took that restriction off of my license wow so, that's so wonderful and i'm so sorry to say that we're getting the static back again and i was hoping it would go away so we're just going to have to ask you to pop in and out again yeah. we don't want to miss anything that you're saying and while uh esther is doing that we're going to talk to you about uh that esther has a book and i wanted to tell you about that and that is called from Donuts to Potatoes. And Esther is going to be having a giveaway. We're having a giveaway for a copy of this book. And there's gonna be a link in the show notes for how you can enter up to five entries you can have to get a copy of this book that Esther wrote from Donuts to Potatoes, which talks about the story that she's kind of giving you a little summary of it, but it also has some romance in it. <laughs> and it also has daily words that you can turn to to read for inspiration and she as you can hear from her speaking she definitely has the command for speaking about things and and really making you think deeply and so it's not just for a journey of going whole food plant-based but it would also be for a journey of maybe you know making other kinds of changes in your life so and esther are you back yeah. yeah. So, okay. Well, I was just showing everybody your book. Oh, thank you. Yeah, because you had talked about that you, you're going to be giving away a copy of this, and we're having a little uh, contest for people to enter. And I'm going to have that link to that in the show notes so that they can um, actually see that. Oh, great. So, yeah. Yeah. Wh whoever wins it, I will. Um... I will sign a copy and mail it to you. So let me know uh, who yes. wins. Or who's I, will, I will definitely do that. Yeah. So your eyesight, that was the last thing that you were talking about, about your right. eyesight, that it had been restored and you had to get a, a new designation on your driver's license. Yeah, actually no designation. They took that corrective lens 
restriction off. So that was great. And I did not have to have my knee replaced, you know. And so it's just a win. For me, it's just been a win-win situation all the way around. Oh, well, that's great. Okay, so um, C wants to know, when losing the weight, was raw salad a meal on its own or with the starch as the centerpiece of each meal? Oh, Definitely starch was the centerpiece of each meal. I was following Dr. McDougall to the tea. I ate lots of potatoes, lots of sweet potatoes, lots of beans and rice. No, I'll correct myself. On the beans and rice, I did limit myself to uh, one cup a day on average because Dr. McDougall says that we can actually get too much protein on this diet for our kidneys and so forth. So um, but yeah, I eat lots of potatoes, lots of starch, lots of rice. I mean, starch, he, another book he wrote, which is very good, it's called The Starch Solution. And uh, the only reason why I went to the maximum weight loss was because I was old. Well, no, the reason why was because that was the book that was given to me and it was free. And that's all I knew. And so that's what I followed. But many people also follow him using uh, The Starch Solution or any of his other ideas. It's just that the maximum weight loss cut out uh, healthy but high fat foods such as olives, seeds, nuts, avocados, and soy products. So that was a way of tightening the belt a little bit more so that you could lose weight faster. But not everyone, of course, has to do that. If you're losing, maybe weight is not even your issue. Maybe just health is. So you get to work out your own program. Yeah, and that's what's nice. You were talking about that earlier. We we're all a little bit different, and I think that we should just try different things and see what works for, for us and, and so forth, and I think that that's a great thing. Yeah, and uh, let's see. I think we had another somebody. Let's see. We had another question. Oh, Vegan Knowledge JJ said, when you have lost weight, it seems I can't stop. Okay, when okay, I can't stop losing. Could she share how much she eats to maintain weight? Thank you. So I think uh, JJ is more raw, so that may be one reason. But what what do you you are you maintaining your weight since then? Yes, I weighed this morning and I'm 127, which is at my 130 pound weight loss. So I lost. Uh, it took me the first year to lose 85, and then I lost 25 the second year and 25 the third year, and now I'm seven years and three months out, and I'm at 127. And sometimes if I eat out in a restaurant where there's more salt, uh, or if I eat a little bit of oil or something like that, the scale does often go up a little bit. Uh, and then I just correct it by you know getting back and watching my salt and, and just paying more attention to my hunger and uh, it's just, it's been a great way to, um, to uh, you know, maintain it. Right. Is there a way for you to orient your iPad to the other way so that we can get a full screen view of you? Let's see, will that work? Yeah, there we go. You know what I did? I switched to my phone. Oh, okay. Maybe and, that'll do it. Yeah, this way there's no, there, you know, it, it's not the iPad. So... Yeah. I think this will be good. I'm going to have to hold it. Let me see if I set it down how we do. Okay. Will that work okay? Yes, that's beautiful. Oh, okay. you're, you're quite the pro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's wonderful. Yeah, so I think we all maintain. But one thing I, I think is important, it was important in my journey, is I had to come to the conclusion, what was I willing to give up for life? Or I would never have to think about it again. Oh, you know, I love that because for life, right? Yes. It's for and life, like forever. Forever. And it's for life, like to have a life. Yes. And I realized. That's very nice. I, like I realized that. that no animal has to give up their life for me. And yes. I do not want to eat any dead flesh. That sounds kind of gross, but someone I have, is. <laughs> I have, yeah, I, I just don't want dead, dead animals in my body. They're dead. 
you know, all the life has gone out of them. At least when you eat fruits and vegetables, it still has oh, life. Yeah. And so that's something I can do forever is I don't have to ever worry about eating that again. And some people, you know, who quit smoking say, I'm going to give that up for life. Mm -hmm. I, I can't play games with it anymore. I can't do it on the weekends and then try to be straight during the week. And so for those of you who are spiritually minded, you know, we know we can't serve two masters. We have to choose who are we going to live for? Or what are we going to live for? And it's us, it's our lives. And so that really helped. And I think Dean, Dean Ornish's wife even helped one time. I heard her say, what are you willing to do? You know, if you're not willing to go plant-based, then go your happy way and have a good life. You know, if you're not concerned about the animals or the environment of the world, then go on and live your life until you know better. But once you know better, it's hard to go back because it's so real. Yeah, absolutely. It, there's just so much to, for me, I can't unlearn it. No, it's no. Like, know it, I, I just can't, can't. So that I think that's for me what makes it easy not to go and eat these other uh, foods that I used to eat because I, I know what they're, they're deleterious to my health or I know that, that, that I'm also harming other creatures there's so many reasons that it just it's it's such an easy choice to right. maintain what i'm eating and then of course you know we both celebrated birthdays recently and to to know that we're that much older than we were when we first began this journey i mean i'm over a decade older than i was when i began the journey and i'm supposed to be feeling worse now yeah uh, we're supposed to be on medications and we're supposed to have aches and pains and not be as mobile and, and have not have as much cognitive clarity. I mean, there's just so much that's supposed to be happening to us as we age. And I feel, I feel more youthful now than I did, yeah. you know, 10 it, years ago. It's such a gift to find our answer because I think we're all here struggling to learn how to live and how to be our best. And then each time we learn another piece of the puzzle, we can add that to our to our picture and and embrace ourselves with that. And so we're not done learning until we're done, you know, and I still have much to learn. And but I'm embracing change because we can't stop the world from changing. And there's a lot of stressors out there and there's a lot of things that can derail us. But once we like for me, once I felt like I had the tools that I needed to regain my health at the age of 72, who would ever think at 72, you would turn your life around? You know, I, I'm already so much older at 72 than you even are now. So look how many more years you have of, of being healthy and being vibrant and being able to serve your causes. You know, it's just, it's, you know, and do I wish I would have learned earlier? Why should I do that? I, I learned at the time I needed to learn. So there's no regrets, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, it, and it, we're, I think that our level of commitment and the things that we're doing because of it, it was, it just came at the, at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Besides, before that time, I, I said to Ben this morning, what would we be doing if you still owned your donut shops? Yeah. You know, that would put us in a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad I'm glad he sold the last one before we got married. So yeah. That, that made the transition when it finally did come to be better for both of us. And he's doing so well too. He's just and at first he said he could never eat this way and I let him be him. We have to let everybody be who they are. We can't change anybody. We can't govern anybody. We can't dominate anyone. It's a full-time job taking care of ourselves. But after about nine months, he came on board. So it's it's just wonderful to be enjoying our senior years and feel like there are no limitations. Yes, absolutely. It's just so important to uh, to know that you can have good health and enjoy your life because you work so hard and then you finally get to this point. And I, I, my heart hurts for the people that have not been able to 
learn about this lifestyle because they work so hard and they get to a point in their life when they can finally have freedom to do things and they don't have the freedom because of their illnesses or their, their mm -hmm. physical condition. So yes, absolutely. So um, I'm trying to see if, uh, okay, I think we asked that one from C about, I'm just looking at the comments and just making sure. Um, so C want to know when you were losing the first year, did you stick to basically three meals per day and was salad one of the meals? Uh, yes, we did a lot of cruising too during that first year. And so Cruz has always had a wonderful salad bar. There were a few times when I um, enjoyed chocolate. We had a specialty restaurant on the ship and they served chocolate at the end of the meal. And I was still putting that on a pedestal and I was not going to not eat it. I did eat it. Um, I had had a, a few cookies, but the thing I had agreed upon early was no animals and no dairy. So when there was ice cream on the ship, I did not even, and I stuck with uh, the three meals on the ship. And at home, yes, I was, earlier on, I was much more into three meals a day. Now I, I don't think of three meals a day. I don't know who made up that rule. I think we're supposed to eat when we're hungry and stop when we're full or satisfied. So um, I think three meals a day is kind of arbitrary. At the beginning, I was really into oatmeal every day for breakfast, and I would have lunch, and especially in the summertime, would have big salads. But I always loved my potatoes and my beans and rice. Um, but now I, I don't even eat like, okay, like it's one o'clock in the afternoon here. And really, uh, this morning I had my lemon water, I like to puree lemons, and that's because, not because they're magic, but because somebody gave me an abundance of them. I put them in the blender, blended them, and put them in um, ice cube trays, and I like to add the lemon to the water. So I had that this morning. I had a couple of bites of a peach, you know, and probably when we finish, I'll probably eat something. But sometimes what I'll do now is I'll make a plate full of food, and maybe I'll just eat part of it and eat part of it a little bit later. So it's just more fluid now. It's just, I don't think in terms of time and think in terms of meals as much, but initially, yes, when I was following the program, it definitely was three meals a day. And I didn't worry about how close to bedtime I ate. A lot of those rules, make up your own rules. You know, there's so many rules out there. You could go crazy. You know, I mean, you worry about organic, inorganic, you worry about what time you eat, you worry about intermittent fasting, you worry about, you know, so many hours before bed and whether you should exercise first and then eat. I mean, there's enough information out there. You can pick and choose what you want. But I would say take take your own power back and own what you want to do with your bodies and believe in yourself. Yes, absolutely. I, I know I... I was never a breakfast person. I never really liked, I, I would I would eat breakfast because they told you that's what you're supposed to do. And I would almost force feed myself to eat the breakfast because I just wasn't even hungry. Mm -hmm. And even now, I, I I don't usually get hungry until maybe noon or eat. sometimes if I'm busy, then I, then I don't even think about it. And it might be one o'clock and I say, I think I should eat some breakfast. And I too don't usually eat three meals a day. I'll I usually have the two, but I think, I think you just should do what your body directs you to do. Mm -hmm. And it, I think a, a, some of it does definitely depend on your activity too. Sure. And I, yes, whether you're sedentary or, you know, sometimes people will look at what I eat and they'll say, Oh, I would starve. Well, they're probably 20, 30, 40 years younger than me. They're probably out working. They're probably running around chasing kids. You know, it's a whole different ball game. And then you can't judge one day's meal by another day because the next day I may never stop eating. I may be eating all day long. So our body's needs change on a daily basis. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Let's just see. Oh, Kylie Kai said, I can only eat one to two meals a day and never in the morning. Yeah, that's definitely okay. Oh, so here's a good question. And we, we get our green warriors come and and we 
sometimes we have new people coming in. And so uh, Angela Willand said, what do you think about putting salmon or tuna on salad? I eat a lot of salad, but I put hummus and avocado in my salad. So I think it's a good thing to talk about. What did she put in her salad besides hummus and well, she to know what you, well, she said, what do you think about putting salmon or tuna on salad? I, and then she said, I eat a lot of salad, but I put hummus and avocado in my salad. Well, my, my um, decision was not to eat any animals. So if she's asking me what I think about putting salmon on there, I say, follow your own heart. If it agrees with you and you like it and that's what you want to do, it's your journey. I have no judgment about that for you, but for myself, I choose not to. And avocado, if you're not trying to lose weight, avocado is wonderful. Uh, one fourth of an avocado is considered to be a serving and it's easy, to, would be easy to eat two cups of guacamole. So it depends on what your goals are. Are you just wanting to be healthy or, you know, it's, it's a personal decision. But for me, I, I don't eat fish. Um, that's just me. And it's, it's what many vegans would agree with. It's not what there are other people out there who have a different idea and it's theirs to work out. So I just want to love y'all, whatever you're doing, if it's working for you, do it. You know, we can't, um, lobby to try to get everyone to be like us because we're all needed in this world and we all are doing our own thing and we're all contributing to the overall wellness of our planet yeah but i think that like we had talked about earlier once you know something and you can't unlearn it and there isn't always enough information out there so i, I believe that everybody should get informed yeah. and they make that decision based upon the information that they have and for example salmon is touted as a health food but it is 50 percent fat so if, especially if you're trying to lose weight, it may not be uh, helpful as far as getting you to your goal. Right. So, and then there are other things about fish, tuna fish. I, I, I often think about tuna fish where I think that I've, it's been a while since I've seen the tuna fish label, but it, they used to have on the label, don't eat this if you're pregnant or only eat it once more than, not more than once a week if you're pregnant. And I think if it's not good for a pregnant person, it's I don't think it's good for anyone. Um, <laughs> that's just that's, my that's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because oftentimes the the fetus is the barometer of of the of the health situation between the mother and the baby, and yeah. oftentimes the fetus will get affected even if the mother may not get affected. Yeah. And so that's why there's so many warnings around different that's things right. for for uh, people who are pregnant to consume yeah. things because uh, the fetus will, will it's, it's like the canary in the coal mine. It'll yes. get, it'll yes. show. Yes. So, and that, and then of course there's microplastics in seafood and, and there's uh, different toxins. So I would definitely suggest to anybody that was thinking about putting that as a part of their diet. And like you said, Esther, if that's what they want to do, it's of course their personal choice, but get the information and then make, make a decision once you have, once you're informed. Yeah. I, my own experience has been that people often ask questions about things that they're already partially knowing. And, and Dr. McDougall says people like to hear good news about their bad habits. And so I personally do not believe that we need any animal product to survive and thrive but neither do I want to judge someone who's not at that place yet. Mm -hmm. Because we weren't at one point. That's right. Just seven years ago, I was eating escargot dipped in butter. I was eating crab salads. I was eating shrimp cocktail. I was eating, um, I was eating, oh, I love salmon with butter on it, of course. And um, so I too, you know, was a carnivore and ate all of that and loved it. But it wasn't the meat and the animal that I loved. It was what I put on it to make it palatable. I would not have eaten boiled chicken. No, I wanted the barbecue sauce. I, on, on ribs, I would want the barbecue sauce. On shrimps, I wanted the cocktail sauce. 
So I really realized what I was hungering after was the uh, additives that I was adding to the meat to make it tolerable. Yeah, and oftentimes that's done to the meat even before we get it. For example, they inject uh, sodium broth into chicken Yes. before we even get it. I remember saying, I'm just going to grill this chicken so it'll be healthy. It'll be a chicken breast without skin on it, and it'll be healthy. But meanwhile, I was ingesting not just all the hormones and the chemicals that they put in the feed, but there was already sodium in it so i thought that i was being so brave but it's oh yeah lots, lots yeah. of salt in it and and when i was a, when I, I called myself a food addict because i was addicted to food to not only uh, sugar but also i didn't realize i was also addicted to fat because when i was on that atkins diet i could eat all the butter i wanted i could eat all the cream i wanted i could eat all the pork rinds i wanted and I'd come home from Costco and actually peel the skin. It's gross now when I think about it. I peel off the skin of the chicken because that's where a lot of the flavor was in the seasoning. Yeah. And I just eat that skin before the chicken even had a chance to get cold. And then I started realizing that at Costco, every one of those chickens are the exact same size. So they are manufactured. They're not even being eaten as grown. Mm -hmm. you know, chickens by themselves are very skinny. I used to see them in butcher shops hung up by their feet and they would just be like these little skinny things. And now, as you mentioned, look what they're pumped up with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a whole, whole new world and not, yeah. not everybody's had the benefit of, of seeing what it used to be like. And, and I, I that's why I, I talked to my uh, father-in-law cause he's going to be 90 uh, right. next month. And I tell him, because he's still trying to learn what, what does this organic mean and what, you know, and I said, you know, when you were growing up, you ate totally 100% organic food. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, uh -huh. it, it's a whole different world. Absolutely. Well, again, I wanted to tell everybody about your wonderful book because I'm going to be putting in the show notes the link so that they can enter to win your wonderful book from Donuts Potatoes. And I was telling everybody how you have these uh, wonderful daily words that you, that 365 of them. So every day you can open up the book and either turn to today's date or just do a, a random find. And it, they're so inspirational. And it's also a love story because <laughs> <laughs> it talks about you and your husband, Ben. And speaking of the book, Esther, could you do, do you have the book with you that maybe you could read one of the passages to us? Because I, your voice is in my head whenever I read. Oh, books. sure. I was just thinking, how about your birthday? Okay. Which was October 23rd. And I don't even know what the word was that day. Okay, the word is resource. And I know you are a great resource for all of the people who follow you because you get so many wonderful people on your show, many doctors and influencers, and you're doing such a great work there. So we'll just talk about resource here. Years ago, I worked as a counselor at a woman's resource job center where we were funded to help older women re-enter the job market. We taught interviewing skills, did mock interviews, helped them fill out a resume, and tried to connect them with job openings in the community. I too was a retread. I finished college later in life, and I entered the job market after having been a stay-at-home mom. As we make changes in our lives, we depend on resources to help us. My primary resource for having regained my health is Dr. John McDougall. It was his book, The McDougall Program for Maximum Weight Loss, which taught me the secret to regaining my health and losing 130 pounds. He is a food doctor. I proudly wear his t-shirt, which states, it's the food. I value him as a resource so much, primarily because of his heart. All of his information is free on his website, drmcdougall.com, and that is impressive. 
I recently posted about the word fast and have been asked if Dr. McDougall recommends fasting. No, he is a food doctor. He keeps it simple. He does not believe in what could be considered fad diets or foods or ideas. He does refer people to True North's fasting program, but he doesn't get involved in it, except he does re give reference to Daniel's fast in the Bible, and basically that is what he promotes and I follow. Resources abound. There is lots of noise out there, and it is hard to decipher what is true and what is a gimmick. Look for examples of long-term long success. Look for truth. It will win. Happy birthday, Amy. Oh, thank you so much. That's so lovely. And I just, you just have a, such a wonderful way of writing. You write the way you speak. And that's what I love about it, you know, so I can definitely hear your voice in my head and in my heart. Oh. And that was very beautiful. That was a special, special present for me. Uh -huh. Okay. And, and I wanted to tell the Green Warriors that we previously had a book giveaway for the Plan A Diet by Sid Notter. And today we are going to do our spin the wheel so that we can see who won this book. And the next time we're gonna be doing the spin the wheel for Esther's book. But for right now, that's what we're going to do uh, for now. So let me just uh, get that ready for everybody to, uh, to see. And we will do this. And then we're going to be uh, giving that away in just a moment. And here we go. And Joseph is the winner. Oh, congratulations, Joseph. That's so exciting. You are the winner of the Sid Notter's The Plan A Diet. And I'm going to be giving Sid uh, the information for you so that she can contact you and let you know about uh, how she's going to get in touch with you and get that book out to you. That's so much fun. And we're going to be doing that spinning wheel next time for Esther's book. I wanted to ring my bell because Kylie Kai gave me a super chat for my birthday too. And she said, thank you, Amy, for all you do to encourage others. And she said, happy birthday. So that was so very generous and so kind. You know, just just having all of you here and, and, and making the comments, even if you're just talking amongst yourselves in the chat, it's so rewarding because we all need a really good, positive place to be, you know, especially with so much going on in the world. And we can just come to a place like this and know that we're all going to be accepting of each other's differences and supporting each other on everybody's road to uh, getting healthier. And I really, really like to be a part of that. And that's why you make it so special, Esther. Mm -hmm. So we talked about your Facebook group. Tell us more about what you do and how people can find you. Okay, it's called Esther's Nutritional Journey. Esther's is E-S-T-H-E-R apostrophe S. Um, there are two questions that I ask before I will approve you. I think, first of all, you have to know what you want in life. So I ask you, what are your goals or what do you want? And it can be as simple as you want to make it. And then I also really think it's important to watch some of the documentaries that are out there. So I just ask if you've watched what the health or games people play, or not games people play, the game changers or um, forks over knives. And so it's just two questions, but if you don't answer the questions, then I don't accept you into the group. And in the group, what you will see is um, I, I do a video every day and I read from my book. I read the book, you know, the date for that, the, the post for that day. And I also post everything that I eat so you can see either how simple or how really simple I eat. And I also um, write a, a new essay every day. And I also repost what I wrote one, two, three, and four years ago. So it's like having five books free just by reading uh, what I post on Facebook. 
So you're welcome to join. I'd love to have you. Uh, if when you join, you say, I saw you on Amy, it will help me know uh, about how we got connected. So that's it. It's very simple. You can just join there and then you can come every day. You can check in and see what I'm saying. And uh, if it's helpful to you, uh, that's wonderful. So that's what my Facebook group is. And it is a wonderful place to be. It really is. And I got another super chat for Boomer Beyond Wellness. I got a super sticker from you. Thank you so much. Just means so much to me that you guys are all just here supporting everything that we do and tuning in when we have wonderful guests like Esther to be with us. And I do want to thank you, Esther, so much. Oh, you're so welcome. I love being with you, Amy. Oh, and I love being with you. You always have such interesting topics. That, I mean, you could just talk about anything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you and make it so interesting too. You know, that's the that's the best part about it. You really do, and I so appreciate every time that you come on the show. I think we all feel like we're getting a warm hug whenever yeah. you're on. Yes. I like the way you do that. Are you going to do that today? I certainly am. Oh, I wonderful. wanted to know what, what your final take-home message for our Green Warriors would be. Without love, we have nothing. Yeah, that's it. Very simply stated and very so very true. And, and Green Warriors, tell us what you're going to remember. One what, what of the things I'm going to remember is my vision of Esther sitting on an airplane and eating a potato that's raw and making it last a long time, which, which could be good if you had any cravings for something. You could just satisfy that by just eating that. <laughs> and I wanted to thank uh, Just Task Voice because she did the promos and she did the countdown. And Just Task Voice, tell us who's coming up next. Do thoughts of intimacy let you down? Learn why ED pills are not the answer and that it's not due to just getting older. Find out what causes it and how to reverse it. Amy asks cancer survivor and Iron Woman, Dr. Ruth Heydrich, PhD, featured in the movie Forks Over Knives. Your questions answered about ED and sexual health. Wednesday, November 1st, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific on Be Green with Amy Live. I also wanted to thank all of you Green Warriors for joining us. And as a special thank you to all of you, I'm offering you five free recipes. So just go to my website, begreenwithamy.com slash join, and I'll send you five free recipes, some photos of me doing some fun things and pictures of my food and some inspirational, motivational quotes and all kinds of fun things. And now, Esther and I are going to give each other a birthday hug, and we're going to give one to you, too. So go ahead and take your right hand and grab your left shoulder, and take your left hand and grab your right shoulder. Now squeeze, because that's a hug from me to you, and from me to you, Esther. Yes. Birthday, many more years of health and sharing all the good things that you do with everybody, because that's such an important thing that you share with us. And Green Warriors, if you would like to join me and Esther as we sign off, and we're going to do my tagline, and Esther's going to be helping me out with that. Are you ready, Esther? Yes. Okay. Well, until I see all of you again, remember, be strong, be, strong, be, be well, well, and be green. Green. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Esther. Thanks, Green Thank Warriors. You. Thank you. Now you can listen to Be Green with Amy expert interviews wherever you go. Listen while walking, meal prepping, or traveling. Find Be Green with Amy on Apple, Google, Alexa, Amazon, or virtually anywhere you find podcasts. Be strong, be well, and be